the, my first mentor really was um, Gino Marino and his mother, Mama, Mama Marino. Um, I, that woman was a saint on this earth. And um, I really, uh, they gave me a chance. I started bussing tables at Gino's in 1988. How old were you? Oh, I, I was in college. You were in college. So, okay, yeah, yeah. so young. Um, and um, I went behind the bar and taught myself how to bartend because he was a little shorthanded. And when the opportunity came up to need a bartender, mm -hmm. I had already been in there and trained myself, so it was logical. Yeah. So they moved me to the bar, and then they were all family operated, um, uh, which they still are, mm -hmm. obviously. And uh, uh, I ended up getting in there and, and, and bringing another bartender and going into management and helping Mama Marino. Oh, and I wow. learned a lot from her. And then other mentors all along the way. I mean, I've been so fortunate. Um, I, I, I left their employee and I went to work with T.J. Moran, which is a whole other segment of my life. Oh, and I remember I learned, that, though. I do remember that. Okay. I learned just a lot from T.J., opening up Highland House and running Ruth Chris with Tommy Mansour, Learned a ton. Oh, he was wow. he was the epitome of a um, nature d uh, at the time in in, in Baton wow. Rouge, and so I learned a lot from Tommy, um, TJ, a lot of the business there. Um, went to Tom Tanner, gave me a, a nice break. We went into the Camelot Club, got to oh, do gosh. some of that business for a good while. I forgot um, about the Camelot yeah, Club. Was that the, the upstairs at top the top of the bank building? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, that's close now. Huh? It is. It is. Yeah. Uh, Mike Wampole bought that building and turned it into um, some condos up there and, and whatnot. And I, I didn't I think it could happen until somebody told me Mike Wampold was doing it. And I said, well, of course, <laughs> Mike can make that happen. I used um, to love the Camelot Club. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. It was a great place to, yeah, it really to have was. an event. It was beautiful. Yes. You could not, yes. you could not re replicate the sunset and the views, 21st floor of that bank building. It's amazing. Um, yeah, it was great. And, and, and that was a lot of fun. Um, oh, wow. And I was there. I turned 40 years old. I'll never forget. And I sat back and I looked at my wife and I said, you know, this is a great retirement job, but I'm 40. If I'm going to get back out there and really earn more of a living for my family and the kids, um, now's the time to do it. You know, I had time at the Camelot to go play dad. I, I, okay. But that was good. I went to, I coached soccer for a while. I couldn't spell soccer, right? They, <laughs> they had to show me how to kick the ball. And oh. now I'm, teach, I'm teaching these kids. And so it, it, the time at the Camelot Club was, was exceptional for me personally, even though it took me a little bit out of the, the restaurant light. It was 10 mm -hmm. years I spent there. Oh, that wow. let me play wow. dad. You know, it really yeah. did. And okay. then, when I, again, when I hit, when I, when I turned 40, I was like, you know what? I, I, I need to get back into the business. It's time to show the kids now um, th that, that they need to work hard. They need to see. Absolutely. They need to see hard work. And so uh, I went back in. I got back in with T.J. Moran's son, Burke. And I went in with him at the T.J. Ribs um, and Nymphas. That at the time, okay, which is now Tia Hobbies. Yeah. I and uh, and then um, that didn't work out. There's a reason that people say sometimes good friends don't make good business partners. <laughs> uh, uh, it, it was a situation, and we parted ways while we could stay friends. Cause, uh, That's the best way to do it. It was, it was the best move in the, in the whole world yep. for all of us. And, Absolutely. Um, I still wish Burke the, the best. We're friends today. Uh, we, we, we talk about things all the time here and there, and, and, and it was important to both of us to keep that way. And, and so then I fell in with Wayne Stabler. Well, when I left... Um, when I left uh, TJ Ribs, um, and I had been, I, I, I don't know, I, I had been putting in a lot of hours, right? And so when I when I left there, I said, you know what, I'm going to take about three months. I've never been without a job since I went to LSU. My first semester at LSU, I got a job, and I have never been without a job since then. Um, and. Uh, I guess it's a work ethic that I learned from my mom and my dad and 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 and, uh, and on through the, the the genes and the family, but um, I just sat back and I told my wife I said you know I'm going to take three months and I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to go to Orange Beach with my oldest son for his baseball. 
tournaments. Good, and we're going to yeah. go stay for three days, and we're going to go play. I'm going to be a regular dad, and um, I'm going to just take a breath and, and wait. So that was my plan. Uh, the day that I left TJ Reps, at 9 o'clock the next morning, I had a phone call from uh, a lady who um, now I know ran Wayne's businesses. Her name was uh, Layla Bredos. And um, it was, the phone call wasn't real clear. And all I could make out of the conversation was Wayne Stabler. And, and, and so I, I, I didn't know what that was about. And um, so I, I sat back. And then the next day, um, I, I was like, I got another call from her. And I heard Wayne's name again. So I called Wayne. And I said, Wayne, do you have a lady, Britos, something? I can barely understand <laughs> what she's saying. Does she work for you? And he said, yeah, I told her to call you. So, so, so I knew then. Well, well, two things I knew then. Yeah. Number one, I knew that Wayne knew that I was going to be available to do something. And that was very flattering yeah, that he, he would reach quick. out so fast. Yeah. yeah. And number two, it also told me that Wayne trusts this person, Layla Britos, to have her call me. So she's the person I have to deal with. Right? Absolutely. And so... Um, I called her and I talked to Wayne and I said, he said, look, he gave me a time frame. It was August 2nd. He said, August 2nd. <laughs> um, I'll be ready to go in August, August 2nd. He said, okay, good. Meet me in my office August 2nd. And then uh, and I walked in and told him, um, he said, what do you want to do? I said, I just want to enjoy doing what I have been doing all these years. And I want to raise my family comfortably. And I want a good, honest living with somebody I trust. That's what I've done my whole life. And um, and that was it. We opened Stabs in Central. So that was the first weeks. one in, in Central. First one I was involved with, okay. with him. With he him. had the two little villages okay. were already there. Okay. And my current partner now uh, at the little villages is Hugh Freeze. And Hugh okay. had already been at least four or five years working with wow. Layla and Wayne at the little villages. And so uh, we uh, Wayne was already on his way to opening Stabs in Central. I, did, I came in right before we opened, and, um, and that was it. So, I, I don't know, 12 years ago? Yeah, yeah, he did. He started off, uh, even before the crawfish, he would go down to the docks. I mean, he's such a hustler, you know? He's really? always moving. Yeah. Uh, he's the Energizer Bunny. I don't know where the energy <laughs> comes from. He never stops. And, um, and he was so driven. Um, there's a lot of, you know, Wayne's a coach, and his dad was a coach. So if you think about the coaches in your life, yep. then Wayne's a lot more uh, easy to understand when you think of him that way. He's driven, mm -hmm. he's competitive, he wants to win, and he wants to make the people around him better. He wants to rise everybody up, if you will, and, and get them to where the team can can make it across the goal line. And, and that's the easiest way that I can describe him so he started off going down to the coast and buying fish and really? and, and and oysters and whatnot off the boats and and running them up to <laughs> baton rouge and, and selling them to the, the restaurants and the markets and whatnot and then at the same time he was running into doing crawfish boils and um he had a couple of breaks with some with some people in town and and um the crawfish boil thing started to kind of be his niche yeah, because I remember um, they were. Yeah. Everybody wanted his crawfish. Sammy's when we were in college. Wayne and I both were in college, <laughs> and Sammy's opened on Highland, and it was that little bitty place that is still the front section yes. bar of the Highland location. That's where we used to and go all the time. <laughs> I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm going to tell you, you know, I, twice a week it was you know a grilled chicken club and yep. three Bud Lights for me, <laughs> maybe more than three. But um, that was it. We were there all the time. And um, so Wayne had, a, had an affinity for that as well. And, and when, when that brand uh, went through the trouble that it went through and ended yeah. up you know, closing down, and, and it, was a, it, was a, it was a pretty rough struggle for them towards the end of things for four or five years. It was a struggle from what I could gather. And uh, Wayne was like, you know... I, I don't think Baton Rouge needs to lose the Sammy's brand. Uh, he, he's had a soft spot. He's very loyal. He's an incredibly loyal 
person and very grounded. Um, and he's very community oriented. And he did not want Sammy's in Baton Rouge to go away. I love that. So, you know, he made an arrangement to take over the name. And, uh, and then he called and uh, made arrangements to go to the original location and, and, and basically reopened that spot. And um, I'd never forget, I was sitting in that building doing interviews um, in early part of 2020, I guess, when, uh, when oh, the wow. governor shut down the entire state. Yeah. I don't know, maybe the end of 19, early 20. It was, it was in that area. Yeah. Whenever, whenever mm -hmm. the state closed all the businesses down, right, um, that's where we were. And so crazy. Um, we were like, you know, it's going to be a challenge anyway because to take a brand that's got 30 years worth of history, um, good and bad, and resurrect it is almost more difficult than starting a brand new brand. Uh, I, I, I think it is. So, no, because um, everybody compares. Well, people people mm -hmm. remember their last settings, and they lose track mm -hmm. of time. They do. You know, back at the Camelot Club, I remember when we took that over. It was 2000 when I started there. And I, I, I met one lady one time, and she was like, oh, the Camelot Club, I don't go there. You know, they really just, it was brutal. My son's uh, rehearsal dinner, it was terrible. Oh, wow. And I was like, well, yeah, really? When 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 was that? Oh, night. 1989, <laughs> and I'm like, you know, <laughs> so so. I mean, that's what you that's what you fight. You fight you know, people's 100%. last experiences are really strong. They are. They and, are. Um, no, you're right. You know, and people forget they have their own lives. They they can't keep up with what who's doing what here and there. Mm -hmm. Family, kids, work. Uh, everybody's got enough on their plate. You know, they, they, they don't do. want to think about that stuff. No. Yeah. So it was a tough thing to do to go resurrect that brand. I, I thought, and Wayne thought, we all knew. We had, we had some good guys in there, some good partners. Like Joey Fessian, who's our partner there now, and um, uh, he uh, he's uh, was running uh, Highland. Now he's opened up Perkins for us, and um, the Perkins Road location is a smaller location and now that wayne has gifted all of us the restaurants i have there's six of us total that are partners in sammy's um we all believe that the sammy's model should be what it is now in prairieville at perkins a smaller footprint it's meant to be a neighborhood joint oh. sammy's grill it's a neighborhood joint it's it, not yeah. a 200 seat restaurant you know, to go, it's it just not. And so that's what we're looking forward to, it's to quite, growing. It's yeah. quite, no, and I do, I do agree with you with that because I think the old Sammy's that was in Prairieville, that was humongous. It was too big. Big place, um, beautiful place. Took beautiful. a lot to get that going. 100%. The guys at Mike Anderson's picked that up. They've done a great job with that. They've done well. Um, no, they've done very well with that. It's just not something we wanted to do. We want, no. we want the smaller footprint. We want, we want to revitalize the brand as what we believe the brand should be. Perfect. And, um, you know, uh, all of our partners that are there, uh, um, Shanna Rayburn's been a Sammy's person forever and ever. She's at Highland Forest now, and um, Fritz Carville and Dondi McNulty and Jeremy Weber. That It's, it's all of us um, that are in this thing together. And a pretty, pretty cohesive group, and all of us worked for Wayne. It was part of that gift. A lot of, uh, not a lot, yeah, yeah, a lot of Wayne and Lucy's close friends, it was not a shock to them. It was a shock to everybody else. Wow. But they don't, they don't, um, they don't get out in front of things a lot. You know, a lot, a lot of the things that we did uh, philanthropic, philanthropically, philanthropically, <laughs> yeah, the, um, that Wayne was behind, um, he would be behind not for anybody to know that he did it. That's who he and Lucy are. Very Christian, very um, yeah. um, uh, warm and wholehearted. I, I, I don't even know how to explain their giving nature. Um, they just are. You know, they, they um, again, he, you know, his, his 
mom and daddy, he came from humble beginnings. I mean, he wasn't in the projects, you know, but his dad was the coach. I used to tell people all the time, if you're between the ages of 22 and 60, and you played football in the Catholic organization in Baton Rouge, a stabler <laughs> coached you, right? So it was either Wayne Sr. or, or, or wow. Wayne. And, and uh, you know, they're just giving, giving people. And so... We've been doing this thing with with uh, with him now with the restaurants that we had and um, we had we had stabs in Central uh, first. He had the two little villages already downtown mm-hmm. and an airline, um, and then we opened uh, we opened Palermo Ristorante right there. Um, okay, I didn't realize that was one of you. That was Wayne's. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, um, and then we do uh, Stabs Prime. Okay. Which was yeah. a big, you know, the big, big feather in the cap as far as the fine dining in town goes. Yes. For us. Yeah. And um, and then we get into the Sammies, and the day that we signed the donation papers from Wayne, we also signed the lease for Sammies in Prairieville oh, because wow. we feel like it's a legacy that that he's given us, and it's his legacy mm-hmm. that he's given us, and so we want to make him proud and Absolutely. you know to coach. Stabler there. We want to make sure that we win for him, and um, and we want to and we want to make him proud. We want to make sure that he and Lucy um, know, and they do. We don't have to do anything. They're so comfortable in their decision to give these properties to us um, because they want to go. They have grandkids now. They want to move on to another section of their life. And like I said earlier, when you get into the restaurant business, it's not the hardest thing in the world. Um, but there's no downtime. Um, it's so time consuming. It's time, you're, you're always you're, yes. you're always on. I mean, when you're not there and you're and you're not at the restaurant, it doesn't matter. You have people that are there, that are guests that you or um, uh, it, it, they're friends, and you want to make sure they have a great time. And you know, if your parents were coming for their anniversary yeah. and Troy called and said, hey, Kevin, this is my in-laws. Well, and if I'm not there, well, if I'm not there, I'm still on the phone. I want to make sure things are lined up the right way for them. And then even while they're there, I, there's a piece of me hoping and wondering how everything's going for them. And that's wow. just mentally, you don't ever, you don't ever get away from, from that. And so but Wayne and Lucy were just ready to get away. They were like, hey, let's go. We can go sell these properties. We can make a ton of money. We can do whatever we want to do. But these guys that worked for us, they put in the time and they helped us build these properties. You know what? Let's give them an opportunity to do it. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, it, it really. It chills when you say that because that's just, it's amazing that, that they they did that. It's just, yeah. it's almost like, you know, in the Bible, it always, you know, I don't mean to say, but like it does. In the Bible, it says to give, but not to, but you don't need to like, have like everybody know that you're giving this yeah, or right. you know just they it's like they do things at the goodness of their heart and like giving y'all that that's the goodness of their heart doing that it's like really it's you know, really a lot of us in the restaurant business approach daily operations that way um you know mm-hmm. i wake up and it's tuesday do what we have to do you go into the restaurant so it's tuesday night you're getting ready for the uh, for the for the diners and the guests that are coming in that evening. Well, you know that's just a Tuesday to me, right? But there's twelve tables. It's their birthday. It's their anniversary. It's their mom and dad's fiftieth anniversary. Mm-hmm. It's you know the kid got straight A's in school. It's all these people that are in there for your plain old regular Tuesday. This is a special day for them. You know, even at at lunchtime, you know, it's a business deal. That's a make or break. You don't know what people have that are they're doing over a meal, breaking bread, wine, whatnot. That's that's been back to biblical times, like you said. That's that's when people get together and they get together to celebrate. So every single day you have to reinvent yourself to be ready so that you can be a part of someone's celebration, even if you don't even know that's their celebration. Some people yeah. are private. They don't. Some people don't want to tell you it's their birthday. They scared yeah. you're gonna come out Sing. clapping and singing and give them a sombrero to wear. You know what I mean? Um, no, which you're right. we have done right. in some places. <laughs> so um, some people are funny about that. Or they'll you, yeah, they'll absolutely. say, "Oh, it's my birthday," but but don't do anything. Yeah. Um, so you never know. You just never know when you go by, 
and, and you're taking care of somebody at the table of these guests and they have a great time and they're smiling and everything was great and and, and you know there's just there's a lot of um, self-satisfaction there in that day but then I tell people all the time with our business the reason it's so difficult for so many people to do is because your victories are so short-lived you know you finish up at the end of the night and it was a great day and everybody had a great time and then you go to sleep and you wake up the next morning and you're zero again that's a very common thought and knowledge of, of, of everybody that gets into it and people that aren't in it know the phrase location 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 right, right? Mm -hmm. there's another phrase um, and it, it's from it's from an old baseball movie right mm -hmm. build it and they will come yeah, that's right. <laughs> so, yeah. um, feel the dreams yeah mm -hmm. to, to me it's a combination right the location is it would is a dream there's certain locations that are wow this is fantastic and it's perfect um, and then I always believe that if you have the right people and you do your job and you stay consistent with a product that people want to come enjoy, then they will get to you. Um, and so it's a combination of the two. Um, right. You know, again, being from New Roads, right? I go back to the old Joe Dreyfus house. Oh, this wow. is years ago. Yeah, it's been closed yeah. forever. It was right there, Livonia. And everybody in Baton Rouge had been to Joe Dreyfus. Yep. Do you know what you had to do to go to Joe Dreyfus <laughs> on a Friday night? I know. They didn't take reservations. I know. You had to drive to Livonia. Mm -hmm. You had to park in their gravel parking mm -hmm. lot. They had no bar. You had to pop the trunk <laughs> and have your ice chest of beers and whatnot and tailgate, if Ready you will, to, yep. to wait for your table for your to table. go in and eat at Joe Dreyfus's. Yep. And it was yep. so good. It, it yeah. was excellent. <laughs> and, it, and it was fantastic. You yeah, know? I remember and, and that. And so I've never forgotten that. Um, so it's not always location for me. Um, it's more about the operation and it's about the heart and all that is around the people that you have. Absolutely. Because you, you can't you can't do everything at all these places. You have to be able to convince the people working with you to buy into your mindset and your your um, philosophy and your approach. Um, and you know, hopefully, we can do some of that. If you're a manager in a restaurant, um, there's a lot of time when you're there and you're not at home. So. Uh, well, you know, that there's there's a couple different things there, right? One um, uh, that you that you touched on with uh, um, with the not being not being home, you know. Uh, thank goodness that um, I had my wife Trish at home because Trish raised our boys. I, I I alluded to the fact that I had time at the Camelot Club to to be around a little bit here and there. That was compared to the other people in the restaurant business. I wasn't compared to great all-American dad being there for carpool and volunteering this and that, whatever. I mean, it, it was it was more than 95% of my friends in the business could give to their family. So it, it, restaurant business is, is pretty tough on, you, on, the, on the family, there's no doubt, as are other professions. Absolutely. You know, I mean, um, in in this world, if 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 you're if you're not working hard, you you better be. If you're working hard, you better be lucky, and if you're not working hard, you better be very lucky. No. Um, is is kind of the way that goes. But but the other thing is, you talk about your your dad. Um, I tell that to people all the time because I get in the restaurants, um, people will, will come up and, and uh, you, you said it earlier when we were visiting that, um, you know, you know, you've worked so hard. Um, it's so deserving. They're so deserving of this, you, really you know, and, you, and we get that a lot at Stabs Prime where I'm all the, where I'm at all the time. And it's all, oh, and you know, you and Leo and Dory, y'all have been around. Y'all work so hard and y'all deserve this. And um, it's, it's very nice to hear, but it's also very hard to hear because there are so many people like your dad um, and like Troy, like anybody around mm -hmm. that, that work extremely hard. Mm -hmm. They are very loyal, sometimes to a fault, mm -hmm. and they give their all to 
what they believe in, if they are lucky enough to work for somebody or something that they believe in, they give it their all. Absolutely. There are so many people out there that you could deem deserving. And this stuff doesn't happen to them. So the, the, the story that I tell everyone is it's very flattering that y'all are happy for us and that we got this thing on great. But the story here is Wayne and Lucy. It's the Stablers and it's their generosity and it's their, you know, life changing attitude of sharing what they weren't given, they worked for Absolutely. for their whole lives. Absolutely. You know? Um and you know, it's just um so that that's the thing that I don't want anybody to be lost on. The one in Baton Rouge that's that's a number one that's the most recognized human on the planet is Shaquille. Right. Oh, yeah. so oh you met him. Oh, oh, so oh cool. yeah, yeah. That goes even back before the restaurant oh, wow. uh, business. Does um, he have to duck to get in? Yes, almost, <laughs> almost everywhere. Yeah, almost, uh, almost everywhere. Oh, and, wow. Uh, you know, we just. Um, I've got. It's kind of yeah. It's kind of yeah, neat, but you know, I, again, the. I've got some pictures uh, with a lot of different celebrities. You know, uh, Big Shot imagine. Bob came in the TJ Ribs one day. You know that um, uh, Robert Ory. I mean, Robert yep. Ory hit more big shots in the NBA than, wow. than so many people. Uh, wow. uh, Romanowski and local, the local LSU and, and Saints celebrities. Gosh, there's so Absolutely. many of them to even name. And and all the way back to Ruth Chris. I remember when I met um, the 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 famous basketball coach for the Arizona Cardinals. And you know what I remember in those days? Ludos. This is the late yeah, Ludos. This this is the late eighties. You know who used to come in all the time? Were all the WWE guys. Oh, right. <laughs> the junkyard yeah. dog and no Ted DiBiase <laughs> and Yeah, yeah. So yes. that was like my first starstruck yeah. <laughs> were all oh, the wrestling gosh. guys. Yeah. The uh Real the, the, the Sheik, the guy that managed them all. <laughs> I mean it was you know, so I go back way, way on, on back in that day. So yeah, there's so many. Johnny Damon was just in last night at yep. Stabs yeah. Prime and yeah. you know, I've we've had um, um, yeah, it, it, it's pretty cool and it's pretty neat. But you know, I don't do a whole lot of going in and meeting them. I'm, I'm, there's some guys that are comfortable doing that. Um, I'm kind of not. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit more, you know. Hey, standoff. No, no, y'all don't. Nobody gets autographs. That kind of stuff. And because uh, I want them when they're in our place to enjoy their time. Now, if they reach out, Johnny Damon last night was very open and welcoming and would ask you, oh, you want to get a picture or this? Engaging. You know, when, when they're that way, then absolutely, it's fantastic. But a lot of times they aren't. A lot of times, you know, it's uh, Nick Saban when he was at LSU. You know, Nick would go out to dinner twice a year, maybe. You know, and Miss Terry would call me and she'd say, Kevin, look, Nick and I are going to have a date. We're going to go out to eat, you know, slip them in the back door, slip them in the back corner. Yeah. That, you know, they <laughs> yeah. don't want, they, you know, they don't want anything. No, I didn't take pictures with Nick Saban for the first, you know, I don't know, a year and a half that I knew him. You know, it's just I never would ask. You know, Miss Terry asked me, you want to take a picture with Nick? You know, um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Thank you.